Well, are you thankful for Jesus today? Amen. He said, wherever that he is lifted up, people will be drawn to him. And this time of year, every time I go someplace and hear songs singing about Jesus, I love it. Uh, because I know that as people hear the name of Jesus and the gospel message proclaimed in Christmas songs and in Christmas music, it impacts people's lives. Um, and uh, we've been, uh, in the last couple of weeks, talking about songs of Christmas uh, and Christmas songs. And uh, this morning, uh, we're going to continue that by looking at, uh, at the songs of, of the angels and the, the songs that the angels sang uh, when they appear to the shepherds, and we're going to do that by going to Luke chapter 2. If you didn't get an outline of the message this morning, some of our ushers have a copy, and we'll get one for you. If you hold up your hands, I'll get that to you. But we're going to go to Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Luke chapter 2, and verses 8 through 15. And uh, we're going to walk through uh, just uh, this, this passage of, of the Christmas story. Uh, where the angels come and, and uh, give this great, incredible message to the shepherds. And then we're going to focus just real quickly on the lyrics of the song that the angels sang uh, uh, in, in celebration of Jesus, Jesus coming. All right, so let's go to Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, and here's what it says. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a, ma in a manger. And suddenly... A great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. All right. Hey, I, I want us just to walk through this story just for a, a moment this morning, and we're going to break, uh, uh, break some of this down and just highlight a little bit of what's, what's happening uh, here. Obviously, when Jesus was born and when uh, he came into the world, there were uh, different events that were happening all over the place from the time uh, that, that the angel came and spoke to Mary and Joseph, and then uh, upon uh, Jesus' uh, birth into this world, uh, there, there's just a... A, there's a whole uh, list of things that happen that are that are awesome. They're mac miraculous. There are uh, a couple of other songs that uh, I, I would love to get to as well. There's a song by Zachariah um, that uh, he sings in, in two parts. Uh, he sings it in celebration to the Lord of what God is doing and sending his son, Jesus. And then Zachariah also sings uh, 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 in part of his song, a prophetic word over his son, John the Baptist. And what his son, John the Baptist, would do and what, what uh, he would be because of God's favor upon him. It's, it's really powerful when you look at that. And so on one hand, you have, so really what you have is you have a song from a father, song from a father, okay, singing a book about God's promise in his life and the goodness of God and, and, and uh, sending his son and then also proclaiming uh, uh, with great joy how God would use his son as his son grows up and speaking of a prophetic word over his son. So, uh, Mom and Dad, I just want to say this to you again today. Uh, speak prophetically over your kids and speak into their lives. And Jesus was spoken of prophetically when he was born as a baby, and so was John the Baptist. And so I want to uh, just in encourage you to do that uh, because it's, it's powerful. Um, and in this story with the angels and the shepherd, we have the angels that are coming uh, and giving decla great declaration about Jesus. Uh, all through uh, the Christmas story, we see angels are involved. Uh, and, and I love this. In, in fact, all throughout the Bible, we see that angels are involved in the mission of God. Angels are involved in the mission of God. Uh, just, uh, you know, reading through uh, about Zechariah, Zechariah, John the Baptist. 
father, Zechariah, who was a, a priest in the temple, and when he was on duty uh, and went into the presence of God, went in there by himself where only he could go, all right, it says that, that the angel Gabriel appeared to him and told him that he would have a son. Obviously, he was, you know, uh, he was, you know, terrified. He was shocked. And then, then the angel said, you're going to have a son. He was old. His wife was old. And, and, and here he is, a priest and a prophet of God. And an angel comes to him, appears to him miraculously, and then gives him a message, you're going to have a son. And the Bible says that Zechariah responded with a word of doubt to the angel. Okay, how can this be since I am old? Instead of just saying, okay, thank you, God. I was praying for that. Hallelujah, all right? Uh, he questions the angel. And, and watch this. I love this because here's the angel's response, and that is Gabriel. And when Zechariah said, how can these things be? Uh, the angel says this. First of all, he identifies himself, and he says, I am Gabriel. All right? And then he goes on and says this. Watch this. He said, I stand in the presence of God. Isn't that awesome? Number one, picture that. I stand in the presence of God. And then he said, and, and I have been sent to you. That's pretty powerful. I stand in the presence of God and God has sent me to you. And I've, I've mentioned this before, and, and I've preached a, a series on, on angels and stuff before. But here's the bottom line. When we pray, Scripture tells us angels are sent. And angels are sent on God's behalf. And they are sent to do His work and do His bidding. In fact, we read that when Jesus, before Jesus comes back, one of these days, that angels are going to be extremely involved in the events of the last days. All right? And so we see the, here's, here's angels being involved in every aspect of the Christmas story. And here these shepherds are out watching their, their sheep in the middle of the night. And all of a sudden an angel appears to them. And then God's glory, you know, in, envelops them. Uh, and it was, it was such an overwhelming experience. The Bible says they were all terrified, probably like uh, you and I uh, would, have, would have been, okay? And then the, until the angel says, don't be, af don't be afraid, all right? Um, and, and so this, this great event is happening here, here with, the, with, the, with the angels, all right? And this angel says, hey, I'm bringing you good news. Let's just look at this again. I'm bringing you uh, good news of great joy. That is for everybody or for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Okay, and so we have this angel giving this message to the shepherds, and we could talk about that. We could speak about how God brought his message to uh, those that were considered even some of the most lowest people of society. You know, uh, we, could, we could talk about that, but, but God is, you know, instead of declaring the angel showing up in the temple and speaking this to all the priests, he goes to, he's sent to give this message to the shepherds. And, and so he's given them this, this message, a Savior has been born to you. He says, a Savior has been born to you. Can you say for me? Say for me. For me. For me. All right. Uh, I, I just, I, I want us to catch this today. Jesus coming is personal. Jesus coming is personal. And the declaration of the angels to the shepherd is, uh, shepherds is this, is that a Savior has been born not only to everybody, but to you. And Jesus coming is personable, personal for, for you and for me. Uh, and and uh, we, we, I don't want us to, to, to forget that. I want you to hold on to that. We'll come back and touch on that. And then in verse 13, it says this, and this is kind of where we want to get to here uh, this morning. It says this, that, that suddenly, say suddenly, suddenly, along with this angel and the glory of God appearing, it says that there was an angelic host that appeared and they are singing. Uh, now, we read this passage of scripture, you know, like, like many of you, I've read it uh, hundreds of times, okay? But really, I think it's beyond our comprehension to really understand what this experience would have been like and really to try to help us understand, uh, understand what this experience must have been like, like. It helps us to go back and look at other scriptures in the Bible that talk about angels and angel hosts. 
and great, uh, and great numbers of angels. You know, it says that there was, a, there was a great angelic host. Well, what is that? Very simply, it would be, this angelic host would be described as a great angelic army, okay? Uh, and so we're talking thousands of angels here. Maybe thousands upon thousands of angels that appear and, and sing, all right? Imagine a chorus of thousands of, of anybody just singing, but especially angels, because I'm sure they all have great voices, can sing well. So you have, you have a, a thousands of angels with, with great voices singing a, a, a song, you know, with uh, obviously with all of their might in great declaration and with great joy. Uh, you have, have all of these thousands of angels singing and, and these shepherds are experiencing that. Let's just take a moment. Can we look at these angels just for a second, a little bit of what that might have been like before we get into the lyrics of what they, what they were, what they were uh, singing, okay? This, this angelic host uh, are, uh, is, is God's holy angels that dwell in his presence. Remember, Gabriel said, okay, I am Gabriel and I dwell, what? In the presence of God. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11, John said this, what, listen to this. I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. What does that mean? That means there's so many angels there that they're, they're really uncountable. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That means that, the, the, that this... Uh, this number of angels around about the throne that, that's singing in great chorus to God is, is really uh, uncountable. Picture that. In Hebrews uh, chapter 12 and verse 22, it says this, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God, and you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Doesn't that sound like a great worship service to be a part of? Okay. Uh, worship in heaven is going to be totally beyond our imagination. Totally, totally beyond any words that we could describe uh, what we see or, or what, what we hear. I love that. In Psalms 148 and verse 2, it's, it, it equates uh, the term uh, angels and heavenly host here, it says, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his heavenly host. I mean, they are in heaven constantly praising and worshiping the Lord around the clock, day and night. Revelations tells us that they sing nonstop, holy is the Lord, of, uh, Lord Almighty, who was and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. They, that they sing and worship the Lord around the clock, day and night. Psalms 103, verse 19 through 21, tells us this, that the Lord has established His throne in heaven, and His kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, all you His angels, you mighty ones who do His bidding, who obey His word. Praise the Lord, all His heavenly host, you His servants who do His will. And I, I could read you many, many more scriptures from the Bible that talk about the angels of God, God's heavenly hosts that praise Him and that worship Him around the clock. So really, what, what is happening here in verse 14 when all of these angels show up? Let me, let me just help us a little bit with that. Really what's happening is, is that the heavenly host of angels, the angelic choir of heaven, in, in, the, in the heavenlies and the presence of God has now just made an appearance here on earth to a whole bunch of shepherds by thousands in mass to sing a great declaration. That had to be epic, to use a modern day term, right? <clears throat> that, had to be, that had to be just incredible. That is and was a life-altering experience for every, one, for every one of those shepherds that were there that experienced that on, that on that night. 
And the Bible says this in verse 14, so let's look at this this morning, that in verse 14, that that these angels came and so they sang a song. So here's another song at Christmas. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went through the Song of Mary, okay? And, and throughout the Christmas story, we see that there are different songs that, that break forth in celebration of Jesus coming uh, into the world. And so, in, you know, today and in our modern day times, we, uh, Christmas is full of music. It's full of songs, and uh, it's full of, uh, Christmas is full of songs that talk about uh, the coming of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But interesting, this is interesting, because uh, we have this whole choir that comes and sings. I mean, we've got thousands upon thousands of angels that are on the scene, but Scripture really gives us only a short, uh, only gives us a short uh, uh, sentence, only gives us a short little description of what they sang. Now, were there other, other, other lyrics that, that they sang in their song? I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us, okay? But, but the point is, is that there, there are really two specific highlights that they're highlighting in, in bringing this message to the shepherds and to us and the whole world. And we're going to look at that uh, uh, here uh, this, this morning just, just real quick, okay? And this is what they sang. In an NIV version, it breaks it down this way. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Boom, that's it. That, that, that's it. Now, how many of you know that a lot of Christmas songs today, I mean, they have, they have three, four, five verses, and then a chorus. Uh, you know, they're long. Uh, they're, they're shorter, there are shorter Christmas songs that we sing. I mean, you have songs, you have hymns, you have various kinds of, of songs that we sing. But in this passage of Scripture, just, it's just one verse. It's not many. Like all the other songs that we read in the Christmas story, I mean, they're verses, multiple verses. They're long discourses of, 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 you know, of, of, of explaining and exhorting and praising God for what he's done and what he's doing. And here's just one verse. And it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. So just real quickly this morning, let's break down these two things, all right? Because here's the deal. Everybody look at me, all right? These two things are so important, it's the only thing the Bible tells us the angels sing about. That's it. There's two things. The two important uh, lyrics in this song that they sing. All right, and so if there's only two major messages in, this ly in these lyrics that these angels sing, then we really we want to uh, capture the heart and the purpose of, of those lyrics in, the, in that message here this morning. The first part of what they sing is just is this, just simply glory to God in the highest. Now, what are they doing here? They're singing, they're singing, and they're giving honor and worship to God the Father. In this, in this whole Christmas story where everything uh, really dwells so much on Jesus and Jesus coming, you know, before the angels even begin to sing about that, the first thing they do, they do is they sing and give glory to, to God the Father in heaven, the sovereign King of heaven and earth. The angel song had an upward vertical element, first of all, giving praise to God in heaven. I like that. I, I love the passage of scripture in, in Psalms 24 and, uh, where, it talks about, where it talks about God and who God is. It says this in Psalms 24. This is a psalm of David in Psalms 24, 7 through 10. David says this. He says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? And he goes on to describe that. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O you gates. The king of glory may come in. Lift him up, you ancient doors. Who is he? The king of glory. The Lord almighty. He is the king of glory. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, God is described by many words. Uh, there are many words in the Hebrew language that are attributed to God. But one of the words that's used often in the Old Testament is the, is, uh, is the word in Hebrew called El Elyon. E-L, 
capital E-L-I-O-N, El Elyon, all right? El Elyon. And that word in Hebrew simply means this, God Most High or Most High God. How does that do? What is that saying? That is just simply describing our God as the only God, the most high God, the great God, the God above all gods. Remember when God described himself to Abraham, he said, I am that I am. When God described, uh, identified himself to Moses when he was calling him to go back uh, and lead the children out of Egypt, he said, tell them I am has sent you. Isaiah goes on and says this, when the Lord says, uh, ask the, God asked the question, is there any other God besides me? He said, no, there is not any. I know not one. And God repeats that, repeats that numerous, numerous times. And, and so right off the bat, as these angels show up, they begin to give praise to God the Father in heaven. Well, for several reasons. Number one, and here it is, is because God is God. He's God. All right? He's the God above all gods. He's the king above all kings. There is only one God throughout all heaven, throughout earth, and that is God, the great I am. And they also worship God, the Father, because God has kept his promise with all of creation. And so they worship God they give glory to God, okay, because God has kept his promise to all creation, which goes back to Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 13, when God said, right, right at the beginning when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, when God said, uh, I will send one who will come and break this curse. Satan will bruise his heel, but Jesus will crush his head. And God said right from the beginning of creation, when Adam and Eve sinned and, fallen and fell away, God says, I'm going to send one that will redeem, redeem mankind back to myself. That was God's plan from the beginning. And so here's part of their celebration is this, is the angels and the host of heaven are praising and celebrating God because he's keeping his promise with mankind. How many are glad God keeps his promise? God keeps his promises. And so all of heaven rejoices and praises God for the outworking of God's salvation, uh, for the unfolding of, of his redemptive uh, history that's culminating in the coming of Jesus Christ, his son, who's going to come and live and die and then rise from the dead and then return again. Uh, uh, they're, they're rejoicing because God is fulfilling his promise in, in sending his son Jesus to be the savior of the world. And all throughout the Old Testament, prophets spoke and prophesied that a savior would come. It, all of us know the course, or the course of the verse in John 3, 16, where it tells us that God the Father loved the world so much that he sent his son into the world to be our Savior so that whoever believes in Him would not perish. That's what God did for us. So here's the thing. This Christmas season, as we celebrate Jesus and His coming into the world, let's also remember to thank God the Father, who is the great God above all gods, who has kept His promise with us and mankind, who sent His Son into the world to be our Savior. Uh, let's, let's give our thanks and honor to Father God as well for what he has done for us. It is appropriate to thank God for the gift of his son. And that's what the angels did right off the start. They just said, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And I could speak on that for a long time. But then they go on, and the second part of their message is this, peace on earth to whom, to those who find favor with God, or peace on earth to those who find favor with God. And and so we want to ask the question here real quickly, and that is this, peace for who? Who, who, uh, who really finds peace? And here's the deal. Here's the messages for those. Here, here's the messages to the whole world, but here's the deal. It's only the people to whom God draws near through Jesus that will experience life and peace that God gives. So a message of peace and reconciliation is coming to mankind in the world, all right? 
uh, but that message can only be experienced, that peace uh, can only be experienced through Jesus, God's Son that's come into the world. And so for men and women that receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, they're going to experience God's peace, all right, in their life, okay? And, and that is a powerful message there. The Bible says that the angels rejoice because Jesus, God's Son, is coming to man. Now, now let's just try to picture this for a moment here. Let's try to, let's try to picture this. The angels are excited. They're joyful. They're singing. And here's the reason why. Let's picture this. Because Jesus, God's Son, who they know in heaven. Remember, angels, angels are created beings. Created just like you and I were. Satan is a created being. All the angels that rebelled with Satan against God are created beings. Okay? Who created all of creation? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. John tells us this, that nothing was created without Jesus. By him all things were created and nothing was made that was made. So, so Jesus, God's Son, who is in heaven, all right, who, who walks around the, the, the throne of heaven and, uh, and is, is in heaven with the Father. They know who he is and, and they know what's happening. And now they realize that God is sending Jesus, that Jesus, the Son of God, who dwells in heaven, lives in heaven, is humbling self humbling himself, leaving his place in glory and coming to earth, all right? And, and these angels are excited. They're excited because they know that God's Son is coming to mankind. And they, this is a, a big deal in heaven. This is a big deal in heaven. Heaven gets it. Earth doesn't get it. In fact, the Bible says that, that God would send his his son Jesus, that Jesus would come, all right, and that the world would not recognize him. But heaven knew who Jesus was, and Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So these angels are singing this, this song, Glory to God in the highest, and, and, and then they're, they're singing, you know, Peace on earth to, to those who find favor with God, uh, on whom his favor rests. And the scripture tells us clearly that our peace with God comes through Jesus Christ, his son. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 through 17 is a, a powerful uh, scripture. Love that. And we'll just read through that this morning. And we have it uh, on the screen there for you. But in Ephesians chapter chapter. Uh, chapter 2, this is, this, is, uh, uh, this is what it says, verse 14 through 17. For he himself is our peace, this is talking about Jesus, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier dividing the wall of hostility. In other words, uh, he's made, so when he says he's made the two one, that's talking about Jews and Gentiles. Okay, we're all part of the family of Christ. Everybody got that? Okay. Every man and woman on the face of this earth, are, we're all created in the image of God. And when we come to Jesus, we're all part of the family of God. There's no more Jews and no, gent, no more Gentile. We're all one. We're all one family. Jesus has brought us together as all one family, okay? And it says, he destroyed the barrier, that dividing wall of hostility, okay? By abolishing in the flesh the law with, with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body, talking about his body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Verse 17, he came and preached peace to those to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. That's a great passage of scripture, talking about what Jesus has done for us, uh, talking about gaining access through Jesus to the Father, talking about that we have peace with God through Jesus. It's a powerful passage of scripture that Jesus came to bring peace between God and man, and also we're going to see this too, but Jesus ultimately is going to bring peace to all of creation. Right now, there's, there's not peace in our world, okay? Jesus said that there will be wars and rumors of wars until he comes. And you know what? Those things are going to exist in creation until Jesus comes back and does away with all of that. 
because Satan and evil exist in the world. And as long as Satan and evil exist in the world, there's always going to be hostility. There's always going to be war. There will never be, never be ultimate peace on this earth until Satan is dealt with. Until Satan is, is, is dealt with. <clears throat> in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, when it talks about Jesus, it gives him the description of being the prince of peace. He comes to bring peace with man and God, but also he's going to bring, bring peace to, to all of the world in creation one of these days. The Bible says he would be called the Prince of Peace, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and of his kingdom, and, and, and of his kingdom, and all of his reign, peace will never end. That's what scripture talks about. And, I, and it goes on in John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world does. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Don't you like that passage? Peace I leave with you and my peace I give to you. You know what? If you're here today and you're restless in your heart, restless in your spirit, why don't you come to Jesus who can give you peace? In John chapter 16 and verse 33, he said, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, it, it says this, Let the peace of Christ rule in our heart. Rule in our heart. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7 tells us this, Not to be anxious about anything, but to bring our prayers and our requests to the Lord, and that when we do that, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You know, people can never have peace in their life until they make peace with God. People can never have peace in their life until they make peace with God. Why? Because God has created all of us to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And until we come to Jesus and make peace with God through Jesus, we can never have peace in our life. But when we've made peace with God, when Jesus is the Lord of our life, the Bible says no matter what's going on around us, we don't have to be anxious. We don't have to worry. How many like that? One, because the Bible says this, because Jesus loves us and because he loves us, he cares for us. And if he watches over the birds and over the sparrows and the lilies, of the, he takes care of all of that. He'll take care of us so we don't have to worry. Those are Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 6. We don't have to be anxious. We can just pray about whatever and give it to God because Jesus, who is our peace, will fill our life and uh, fill our heart with peace so that we don't have to worry, so that we don't have to be anxious. It, God's peace will guard our heart and guard our life. Peace on earth to those who find favor with God. That's the two great points of the Song of the Angels. We worship God and we celebrate God bringing peace between himself and mankind through his son Jesus. It's the message all the angels are singing about. God is awesome. God is great. God loves us so much, he sent his son to be the redeemer of mankind and bring peace between man and God. And ultimately, he's going to bring peace to this earth. That's why scripture says all of creation, all of creation groans for the coming of Jesus. Because since the time of Adam and Eve and sin that entered the world, sin had, a, sin had an effect not only on us, but also all of creation. Everything God created, animals, uh, this this earth, all of it, uh, it, sin has affected all of that. And ultimately, God's Son, Jesus, will bring peace to all of that. He is the hope of the world. So that's what they sing about, how awesome God is and how amazing it is that God has brought peace and redemption to mankind through His Son, Jesus. So good. So many great uh, lyrics and so many great Christmas songs. I wonder how many times that all of us have sang through some of the great lyrics of some of the great Christmas songs and just kind of missed the power of the message and the lyrics in some of those songs. 
I don't know, maybe as I get older, it seems like I, I notice those things more. I, I, those things capture my heart more. Even songs like, like God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. That's not the first one you think of when you sing a Christmas song, right? God rest you, merry gentlemen. Okay, well, who are the gentlemen? All right. Uh, but, but listen to, to one of the verses of the song, God rest you, merry gentlemen. It says, God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Notice the word Savior again. Savior, Savior. Call his name Jesus because he will be the Savior of his people. Remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Watch this. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. O oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. O oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Isn't that a great song of Christmas? great song of Christmas. Isn't that powerful lyrics? That's, that's why when I go to the mall and I hear God rest you merry gentlemen, I'm like, all right. I love it. Why do I love it? Because, because the person, the power and the presence of Jesus is being declared and shared in a public place and the mission of Jesus to come and destroy the works of Satan and redeem us all back to God when we were gone astray. It's being declared, I, I love it. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. That's what those angels were singing about. So good. Jesus is going to bring peace between the war between Satan and God one of these days. He's already defeated Hell, death, and the grave, and ultimately they will be done away with. Death will be no more, tells, say, uh, Scripture tells us that. Jesus, Jesus brings peace between Satan and mankind. When we come to Jesus, we have peace with God. We're not at war with God. Let me tell you, you don't have to be at war with God anymore. God doesn't want to be at war with you. He loves you. It's the message of Christmas, and He loves you. He sent His Son. It doesn't matter what people have done, what's in their life, what's in their past. God loves you. He cares for you. He sent His Son for you. He wants to, he wants to have a relationship with you. If you feel like there's hostility in your heart between you and God, you don't have to have that. Jesus wants to come and bring peace in your life between you and God. So good. How about Silent Night? I say that's one of the most popular ones, right? There's so many great uh, lyrics uh, and such great theology in some of the verses of Silent Night. Uh, I, I really would encourage you some of the some of the great Christmas carols and hymns. Most of us are pretty good at singing the first verses because we we hear them the most. But I want to tell you, a lot of Christmas carols have three, four, and some of them five different verses. And 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 many of those songs, those verses are so powerful in the theology that they sing about the redemption of God and Jesus' story coming to this earth. Powerful. Powerful. Just Silent Night, we've, we've, we've heard it and sang it so many times. But watch this one phrase, this one line in, in, in the song Silent Night. It says this, Silent Night Silent night, holy night, Son of God, O oh love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face. So he's like, it's, it's a picture of Jesus smiling. You know, he's smiling, you know, baby's smiling, happy. These radiant dream beams, you know, just, you know, off of his face. All of those of you that have little babies right now, we have a whole bunch of little babies in our church, so you know what I'm talking about. I mean, Kelly's up there in the sound booth. Kelly and Teresa, four girls, they just had a baby boy a few, few weeks ago. Congratulations on your baby boy. Kelly is not outnumbered in his own household now. Five women. Now he can shop in the other aisle at the kid's store. Thanks for boys. Boys. 
radiant beams from thy holy face. And here it is. With the dawn of redeeming grace. God's grace extended to us through his son Jesus. And that's what the angels are so happy about. That's what they're singing about. Peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. That's what the angels are singing about. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Emmanuel, God with us, 100% God, 100% man, a miracle coming to this world for you and I. So powerful. So we have this whole angelic choir in heaven just excited, celebrating, singing about this awesome occurrence. It's awesome. Do you believe that this morning? Believe that? You believe in that story? You believe in Jesus this morning? You believe that he came into the world? All around the world, people are celebrating Jesus this week. That's powerful. Powerful. Serena's going to come sing a song about believing our service today.